as we continue to look at threats to data and in particular external threats to data we're going to look at malware here now every even modestly experienced computer user will know a little bit about malware even if they don't know the different types which is really our focus for today we'll look at viruses worms and trojans in this video and we'll look at a few more different types of malware in future videos but let's start by just defining what exactly i mean by malware and before i even do that let's do a kind of like a pre-definition of another really important concept which is software so you may know what software is already, but in case you don't, software are the instructions, or really a set of instructions, which tell a computer how to work. And by that I mean it's really any program running on your computer, things like iOS on an iPhone, the software itself, the operating system itself, things like Google Chrome to access internet, and games like Fortnite. All of them are examples of software, and software is made by somebody sitting down and spending a long time writing program code, so loads of lines of code which comprise these instructions which enable you to do a particular thing and most software is perfectly legitimate we have got kind of a subset uh, some category of software which is not legitimate it's trying to cause you harm it's malicious so malware is literally just a combination of for two words malicious and software so malware like that malicious meaning it's trying to cause you some harm so it's a type of software which is either hostile or intrusive or also quite frankly it's often both hostile and intrusive so to give you an example of what I mean by hostile, by hostile I mean it's trying to cause you harm, it's trying to make things difficult for you, um, often to quite extreme extent. Here is an example of some ransomware, which we'll look at in the next video, where it locks your files and tries to get money out of you in order to unlock your files. So it's very hostile, it's trying to cause you trouble. It can also be intrusive, and intrusive can often be a little bit less extreme than being hostile. Intrusive is about really invading your privacy and maybe stopping you doing certain things. So this is an example of adware, which I'm not gonna explore in lots of detail, but adware is just where loads of adverts get generated, loads of pop-ups. You may have come across a website which is like this, really annoying. It's less hostile than just being a bit annoying and a bit intrusive, but most malware is both hostile and intrusive, it should be said. Now, we don't want to have malware on our computer, and so it's important to understand a few different types of malware. First of all, let's look at viruses, which are by far the most well-known example of malware. I think some people just assume a virus is just all, all virus to know about malware, but actually we have different types. The viruses are very well-known. A virus works in a particular way by inserting itself into other computer programs. So in the same way that you might have heard of a, a normal virus in biology where you get ill and a virus inserts itself into your cells, a computer virus is the same idea, in that this case is inside a computer program. So really, we've got this virus in the middle, which is in reality just some lines of code. And we've got Microsoft Word, which is a normal, perfectly fine bit of software. And the virus is going to work by trying to get itself inside this perfectly fine bit of software. So the virus code sort of embeds itself inside the code of your normal program. That's really how it works as a summary. And using the correct link, uh, the correct terminology really. Once we have a virus inside a program, we would describe that program as being the host program for the virus. So in this case, we've got a virus, and Microsoft Word is our host program. And what that means is, when you are running your host program, when I'm opening Microsoft Word, this virus is also getting open too. It's also running, or to use the correct word, it's also being executed. Is carrying out the instructions. So really, you can't, because the code is sort of merged together, glued together, as soon as you run the legitimate code, it also runs the virus code as well, which means whatever the virus does, and it can really depend what the designer of it wants to do, it will also be, it will happen once you open this legitimate program. So maybe the virus is causing some of your files to get deleted, maybe it will harvest personal information, maybe it will try and lock your computer, because ransomware is an example of a virus, as we'll look at. But also, the main way a virus exists and continues to exist is by spreading. So what will happen is, you run this host program, and also this will mean the virus is able to replicate itself and spread into other programs. So maybe it starts off in Word and ends up in Chrome, and then it ends up in Fortnite as well. It manages to spread itself into other programs, and so makes it much harder to remove. To give another example of a type of malware which works in a little bit of a different way, a worm is similar but is subtly different in that a worm does not actually need to have a host program. So a worm is really standalone, it exists as just its own program, it doesn't need to exist with another program, it's able to be on its own. So for example you might download the .exe file thinking it's some other bit of software and actually it might be a worm on its own, whereas a virus 
needs to be inside some other program. But what is similar to a, a worm, uh, what's similar to a virus, sorry, from a worm's point of view, is that worms can also replicate very quickly. Viruses, their whole job is to spread. A worm is exactly the same, if not more so, because actually a lot of worms are working over networks in particular. A virus tends to be pretty much sticky on one computer. It doesn't tend to spread over networks, apart from if a user is, say, downloading an attachment or downloading a file. It doesn't spread over, like, your home network, for example. But a worm usually or often does. So really, you could put it on your computer, and it might spread to your brother's computer. If you're at school, it might spread to your friend's computer or your teacher's computer. They can spread over networks. And because they replicate so fast, it can really, really start to slow down your network and slow down your computer. Because if they're generating thousands of times per second, it can just cause it to really, really slow down and make it almost unusable in some cases. And often that is just the purpose of a worm, to try and slow down your computer and cause you problems that way. But there can be additional malicious activity going on. Maybe it is also trying to access your files or delete your files, but often it's just for spreading, causing it to slow down. The third and final example I'm able to look at today is a Trojan, which works by disguising itself as a useful program. So you download what looks to be a very normal, helpful program, maybe something like a game or a timer or something simple, usually some simple utility. But actually, it maybe works good for a while but actually there is some malicious code contained inside which can cause you issues. So it's called a Trojan or a Trojan horse because of the story in ancient Troy which maybe you may be aware of where soldiers wanted to attack their enemy and so they built a massive wooden horse and gave this horse to the enemy as a gift. Now the enemy took it inside their fortress apparently, I don't know if this is true, took it inside their fortress and when they started sleeping all the soldiers came out of a horse and attacked the fortress. So you can see why it's called a Trojan for us in the sense that you get a gift or just a useful program, but actually there is this malicious underbelly which can cause you issues. And it may take a while to come out, right? It may take, you may use this app for a few weeks or a few months, and then the malicious activity starts to begin. It can be a slow burner, really. So what is different about Trojan compared to a worm or a virus also is that they can't usually self-replicate. Usually they're pretty content to sit and not replicate. There may be exceptions, but that tends to be the rule. What they often do, actually, not always, but what they often do is provide what we call a backdoor for an attacker. And what that means is that you might download this useful application, like a calculator, for example, pretty useful. It works pretty well. But actually, we know we have this sort of malicious code inside, which maybe after a week actually starts to activate and it causes issues. What I might do is install this backdoor, as I say, which what a backdoor does is provide another way for an attacker to gain access to your computer. So like a backdoor, they kind of sneak in through the backdoor. It means they're able to usually access your computer, maybe access your files. And the idea of creating a backdoor in a Trojan is that because it is a useful program, you might be running it really often or have it open quite often. And every time it's open, the attacker might be able to gain access to your computer. And so that's quite an effective way of gaining access.